but I'm really looking forward to his talk. So we'll first of all pres uh, introduce Professor uh, Jinju Chen, uh, who's going to talk to us about the Padstone study, extracorporeal liver support therapy in acute on chronic liver failure. Uh, Professor Chen is Deputy Director of the Infectious Internal Medicine Department and Director of Hepatology of the Zen Zen branch. Uh, he's a Chief Physician and Professor and Deputy Director of Hepatology at the Guangdong Precision Medicine Application Association. So, Professor Chen, we would much like to welcome you to the stage. Uh, thank you very much, Jiang, uh, Professor Jiang Perro, and for your kind introduction, and uh, my colleagues. And uh, it's my great honor to be here. And uh, we do also think that this is a great event for the hemosorption community, I mean, worldwide, because this is the first one. And uh, we, I think we will have uh, more great, uh, great and great events in this community. So this uh, morning, I will present the very preliminary data of uh, the Pestone study. It's a deep mass therapy in acute and chronic liver failure patients. It's my disclosure. And we all know that the acute and chronic liver failure is a global burden because it's a high mortality within uh, three months. It's a very high mortality. So I, I know here many, many uh, ICU intensivists here, so they know everything. <clears throat> and the prevalence is 35 worldwide. And also, the ACL patients will suffer multiple organ failures, including brain, lung, heart, kidney, and also the liver. And for the therapy options, we know the CRT, we know the press therapy, we know the ECMO, and for liver failure, we have many experience about the therapeutic plasma exchange and the, about the deep mass therapy we have very few experiences in our patients. So that's a, a question we need to answer. And for therapeutic plasma exchange, a very, and I mean, the, the, the world, uh, widely used in, in China and in Asian countries. And the, this is the data from Asian uh, cohorts. Uh, after the match the data analysis, it showed that the therapeutic plasma exchange will decrease the 19 days mortality significantly. And regarding the mechanism underlying the plasma exchange, we know that the removal of the cytokines in toxins may be the uh, right, uh, right way. And uh, regarding the cytokine removal, we need to think about further, uh, like the cytosol, uh, like the other devices. And uh, for the deep mass, if we search the uh, website, we found that there are, there are three ongoing uh, studies, all in China, about the liver failure for, for, to explore the deep mass therapy, the safety and the efficacy in our patients. So it's, uh, the, 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 the one is the Pestone study I will present. And uh, everybody knows that this is a deep mass treatment diagram here. It's a combination of uh, two cartridge. One is to aim to remove the bilirubin and the bioxide. The other is to remove the cytokines and other toxins. So hopefully, this combination uh, working mode will help our patients. However, if we look, look back at the clinical data about the deep mass in China and worldwide, we found that there is very few clinical data. The first one is a, a single center prospective case control pilot study. Only 33 patients in the plasma exchange and 27 in the deep mass group. They want to know the three months mortality. And they, they found that is there, there, there is no difference between the therapeutic plasma exchange 
and a DP mass a treatment. And the only thing is that the DP mass therapy will uh, decrease the adverse events, including the allergic reactions. And uh, how about the DP mass therapy combination with the plasma exchange? This is a, a single center retrospective controlled study uh, from Beijing, and uh, it's one to look at the organ functions and uh, four weeks mortality. And this ACF is defined by the uh, Chinese uh, criteria, and they found that the final result shows that the DP mass plus the plus plasma exchange can or was able to decrease the mortality for the ACF patients at the early stage. That means the bilirubin and the INR is a moderate, not a very severe patients. So the sample size is also very small. And how about uh, uh, to, carry out, to carry out the randomized controlled studies with DP mass in ACF patients? And one, one effort is, uh, I mean, has done by uh, Professor Peng is a uh, neighboring city. And uh, we can see that the published protocol is one to do a randomized controlled clinical trial. However, and for the published data, we, can, we find that it is only a prospective study. It's after the uh, pros pro positive match control, it found that the DP mass therapy can reduce the very early ACF patient's mortality. So that's the, I mean, the reality for us to perform the randomized cl controlled clinical trials with the DP mass therapy in these ACF patients. And however, we need to answer uh, questions uh, like experts, I mean, mentioned before. Which, uh, which patients will benefit from the deep mass therapy mostly? And uh, how can we to perform a very large size uh, studies? So we need to, I, I mean, to get a very smart design to let the study going on. So this uh, almost finished the pestone study. It's one to, uh, pre to profile the ACL patients with the deep mass therapy and uh, with a very hard endpoint. I choose the cluster control study. Uh, like we talk, uh, discussed yesterday morning, it's, uh, it, it's, it's anyway, it's an acceptable way to do studies here. <coughs> And uh, we have 57 centers uh, participated in our studies. We divide the centers into deep mass group and a standard management group. We will uh, recruit 1,300 patients. And for each group, we will have 650 patients. This is a center selection. We, I mean, the main thing is that the, depending on the experience of DP mass therapy in these centers, the centers have many experience with the DP mass, they will divide it in, into the, the DP mass therapy, otherwise into the uh, standard therapy uh, group. For our patients, we want to treat patients with uh, uh, acute on chronic liver failure, adult patients. It's the chronic liver disease, uh, including hepatitis B, the, 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 majority, the majority in China, uh, alcoholic and autoimmune hepatitis, regardless of the etiology. And the diagnosis of liver failure is bilirubin levels uh, over 12 milligrams per day and uh, INR over 1.5. This is the exclusion criteria here. The first thing I need to mention is that patients with three or more organ failures will be excluded because we do not think 
uh, DP mass will benefit these patients. We want to look at the uh, primary outcomes, including the disease progression within four weeks and uh, four weeks transplant-free mortality. And for the disease progression, is defined as that the patients with with non-ACF defined by the isocleaf criteria, they progressed the ACF within four weeks. And the secondary outcomes, including disease progression within three months and transplant-free transplant mortality. And also we will observe, document the safety of DP mass treatment in the DP mass group. This is a ISO-defined ACIF and <coughs> And we have uh, the worker package for the Pystone study. Uh, the patients will be divided into the DP mass mode or uh, standard treatment mode, uh, just depending on the centers they are uh, hospitalized. At the baseline, we will collect uh, the samples, of plasma and the urine. Uh, some patients will be collected the, the, two, the stool samples. And for the deep mass therapy, we will collect the paired samples before and after the first deep mass therapy. And we will uh, follow up the patients at four weeks and uh, at 12 weeks to look at the disease progression and the mortality and the transplantation. Finally, we will have uh, one year data about the patient's uh, survival. We will collect the baseline data and, they, and data on uh, day three, day seven, day 14, if they are still hospitalized. After the discharge, we will collect a phone call, a phone call with the patients to collect the, the survival status or transplantation. And also we will document the uh, deep mass therapy, uh, the procedure uh, of the deep mass therapy. Uh, focusing on the adverse events of the DP mass therapy alone or the, the procedure of the tu tubation. So some adverse events is related to the uh, coagulation event, just like uh, Professor Jiang Pro uh, talked about before. <coughs> and all the clinical data and the bio samples will be centralized. For the clinical data, we have an EDC system, and uh, for the bio samples, we will have, a, a, I mean, stored at each center after, uh, after the, the study, we will centralize all the bio samples to the, our bio bank at the Nephon Hospital. So how to utilize these bio samples? We have uh, several discussions with uh, Antonio Schneider and other colleagues. Yes, hopefully we can have a, a bigger, bigger, bigger and uh, deep of these of these samples. Uh, generally, uh, the Pestone study has uh, the first recruitment patient at uh, September 2021, and. Uh, at 2023 April, we uh, recruit the f last patient, the last patient. So hopefully we will finish this study uh, next April. <coughs> and I will then present the uh, very preliminary data, data of the deep mass group. And, uh, we have uh, 28 centers at the beginning, and finally there is 24 centers, uh, active centers in our study for the deep mass uh, groups. We screened 935 patients. Finally, uh, we recruit, enrolled uh, 648 patients. Uh, the DP mass uh, treatment totally is uh, 1,613. The median treatment uh, times uh, duration is two hours. Is two hours. Uh, 
and for the plasma treatment is uh, 5,000 5, milliliters. And uh, the fact is that 78% of our patients, they have the combination therapy. That means the uh, DP mass plus the plasma exchange. Only 22, 22 of our patients have the DP mass alone. So this so the, the, for the anticoagulation strategy, uh, we see just like John Pro said that we have the majority of our patients with uh, one of the anticoagulant, co anticoagulant. The most common one is the unfractionated heparin and the low molecular heparin. <coughs> we have one center with the regional saturation saturate anticoagulation. For the adverse events uh, of the first deep mass therapy, we documented uh, several advanced events. Uh, the first one is alert. I think is mainly due to the plasma exchange and the dialyzer coagulation, uh, arterial hypertension, and lip numbness, bleeding, and uh, cartridge coagulation, and the coagulation related to intro tubes. So I think that the advanced events is not so many, it's not so many. And if we look at the surrogate markers before and after the DP mass, we found that after the first DP mass therapy, the ALT and the total bilirubin levels uh, decreased significantly after the first therapy. If we look at the inflammatory markers, including the white blood cell counts and the C-reactive proteins, we found that after the deep mass therapy, the total white cells increased anyway. And for the CRP, the levels decreased significantly. And for the blood cell safety, we found that the hemoglobin, uh, platelet counts, and, and, and the hemoglobin, the levels decreased anyway. And for the standard management group, we finally have 25 active centers, and we screened 805 patients. Finally, and not finally, to be honest, we enrolled 615 patients in the standard group. However, here we show that we have the remaining 32 patients still on waiting for the final evaluation for the inclusion and the exclusion. And if we look at the baseline data for the two groups, we found that there are biases between the etiology, between the chronic liver disease, between the organ failures. That's the uh, uh, issues we need to solve, I mean, for, for the further analysis. And if we look at the four-week mortality, and for the deep mass group, the four-week mortality is 15.7%. Uh, and for the standard management groups, the four-week mortality is 20 20 percent, 20 percent. Uh, to be honest, this is not the finalized uh, analysis. <coughs> and uh, we, uh, like Professor Ranko uh, said that after, only after the data set cleaning, we can go further. So hopefully we can uh, get the 12 weeks uh, survival data, I mean, cleaned at uh, this month or uh, early next month, then we will analyze with the st statistical analysis teams for the design endpoints, uh, including the uh, therapy profiles, uh, therapy, DP mass therapy safety and adverse events, and like including ITT analysis and uh, pro protocol analysis to uh, explore the potential benefit of a DP mass therapy in our patients. So about the publication, uh, we
do not determine yet. And uh, finally, uh, the pipestone study, yes. Uh, the pipestone study is still ongoing. Uh, it's still ongoing. And the how to organize the story, present the data, analyze and present the data is a big task. So uh, here I, I mean from my heart that I hope, hope I wish my colleagues uh, to help us, I mean to go further, to help the, the, uh, the, the DPMAS community. So that's my uh, final slides and thank you uh, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Chen. Uh, um, uh, safe journey back home. <laughs>